Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. Uh, we're really glad that you're here with us this morning and also very thankful that uh, for the first time in a long time, we're going to be able to be connected uh, with uh, the rest of our church family uh, who are worshiping at home. And it's been a long time uh, since we've been able to, uh, to offer something both here in the sanctuary and uh, for uh, those at home. So we're uh, very hopeful uh, that it will uh, go smoothly for those at home, but we're really glad that you're also able to be with us. And um, my heart goes out uh, with thanksgiving to our tech team. Uh, uh, so um, our tech team worked for three and a half hours yesterday afternoon uh, and it's, it's made up of uh, John and Linda Hay who are with us this morning and it's great to have our you as people and as a tech team with us <laughs> and uh, Dieter and uh, my wife Pat who's at home uh, welcoming people through Zoom so uh, Together, uh, we worked hard. There's a lot, there was a lot of problem solving to uh, work out, but we're confident that, uh, that people are going to be able to, uh, uh, to hear us at home as well and, and that we can worship, uh, worship together. So very thankful for that. So may God bless us uh, together as we, as we gather to worship God. Our candle represents the light of Jesus Christ, the light that's come into the world. In this holy season of Advent, let us prepare once more for God's light to shine amongst us. The one whose birth we prepare for is the Prince of Peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. So let's turn, we'll, we'll offer our responsibly our call to worship. Grace to you and peace from God. As Advent people, we give thanks to the one who is faithful. Let us proclaim the wonder of God who came, is coming and will always come in word, action and with gentleness of spirit we celebrate the advent of our God. Together, let us pray. Who are we, O God, that you should come to us? Yet you have visited your people and redeemed us in your Son. As we prepare to celebrate his birth, may our hearts leap for joy at the sound of your word and move us by your Spirit to bless your wonderful works. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, even your son, Jesus Christ, amen. So we enjoyed uh, hearing and humming along with some Christmas carols and now we're gonna uh, share in, in some of our Advent music. And the first one is uh, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Thine own eternal spirit, truly 
So we're gathering now around our Advent wreath, and uh, let's offer our, uh, our responsive reading around the, the lighting of our first Advent candle uh, for the sky. Together, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In the sun, in the stars, in the light of the moon, we see the glory of our God. Soon, the one we call the light of the world will be born again in our hearts, minds, and spirits. a little weeny one. <laughs> Maybe I'll go with this one. That's better. Let us pray together. Wondrous holy God, today we begin our time of Advent waiting. Shine the light of your love upon us, we pray and fill us with hope as we make our way toward the stable, the cradle, and the birth that changes everything, the birth of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, our sung, our sung response uh, will, I think, is a new one for you, but uh, Sandra Jean and I will, will uh, offer it, and if you want to hum along, it's from More Voices uh, called uh, Called by Earth and Sky. Called by earth and sky, promise of hope held high. This is our sacred living trust, treasure of life, sanctified. Called by earth and sky, precious of that lights our way, bright dawning day, fire of passion, sorrows undone, our faith and justice won, all by earth and sky, promise of hope held high. This is our sacred living cross, treasure of life sanctified, called by earth and sky, called by earth and sky. Amen. So when we gather together, we uh, bring our hearts together in prayer and offer a prayer of confession um, as we acknowledge that we fall short in our lives and we need God's grace and God's forgiveness uh, this new day. So together, uh, as, a, as a community, let's offer our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we sing the carols that warm our hearts and we light a candle as the holy season of Advent begins. We need your grace that we might observe a blessed Advent. When busyness overwhelms us, help us to savor the moment. When the darkness is deep, shine upon us. When waiting is hard, strengthen our resolve. When we're tempted to hold on to old ways, 
that no longer serve us well, inspire us with new beginnings. O oh God, create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. Amen. We are the clay. God is our potter. We are all the work of God's hands. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, Anna Jean. So our responsive psalm this morning is, uh, is up, on the, up on our screen, and it's taken from Psalm 80. We're going to uh, uh, offer it responsively. Let's listen for good news. Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned amidst the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your might, come and save us. Your face, God, shines on us and gives us peace. God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayer? You have fed us with the bread of weeping and given us tears in plenty to drink. You have made a mockery of us to our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Let your hand rest on the one at your right hand, on the one you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never forsake you Give us life, and we will call on your name. Your face, God, shines on us and gives us peace. Amen. So let's listen now on this first uh, Sunday of Advent to uh, the good news as it comes to us from uh, Mark's Gospel. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. 
and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the good news of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I thought I'd start uh, with an English fairy tale. And I remember this fairy tale as being called Chicken Little. Um, and you may remember that story where the chicken frightens all the other animals by running around exclaiming that the sky is falling. Now I checked out the story on Google <laughs> just to make sure I had it right and I didn't exactly. It's called Henny Penny. I don't know if anybody knows that, knew that. Henny Penny, the sky is falling. And of course, Henny is a hen and she has an acorn fall off a tree and hit her on the head. And from that event, she exclaims, good gracious me, the skies are going to fall. I must go and tell the king. Now the rest of the story uh, that I didn't know, uh, it tells of Henny Penny going on her travels to tell the king that the sky is falling. Along the way, she meets Ducky Daddles, uh, Cocky Locky the Crow, Goosey Pussy, they like these little rhymes, I guess. And Turkey Lurkey. And they all join her on her journey to the king. Now, this is where you would probably stop telling the story to a youngster just before bedtime. Because this group meet up with Foxy Woxy, uh, who also joins them in their journey. However, Foxy Woxy leads them off the path into his lair, where he bites their heads off. I don't know if you knew that part or not. I, I did not. But I was thinking, wow, that fairy tale sure takes a turn for the worse. So Chicken Little or Henny Penny is quite the alarmist in the fairy tale. Being hit on the head by an acorn causes her to believe that the sky is falling, that everything is lost. And I was thinking, not always, but sometimes an acorn is just an acorn. So how am I going to connect this to our scripture story? That's the, uh, that's the challenge for today. God's people in the Hebrew scriptures and in the New Testament have times in their lives when they are sure that the sky is falling, that everything is falling apart. In the scripture story, there are times for God's people when the situation is desperate. 
when there seems to be no way out. Mark, in his gospel that we read this morning, writes when life was falling apart for the Jewish people. In, in the history of the times that Mark writes, um, the Jewish people had, uh, had, uh, were, were, were in an uprising against the oppression of the Romans, but that uprising was defeated and Jerusalem is sacked, devastated, and the temple is destroyed. For the people that Mark writes to, their world is in ruins. And the desolation around them is reflected in how they see the predictability of the sun and moon and stars even. Even the sun and moon and stars have been thrown into chaos. We read in the story today, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven. The powers in the heavens will be shaken. Indeed, for the Jews to which Mark writes, the sky is falling. Everything is in turbulence. In our lives, when things are in turmoil, sometimes the regularity of the daytime and the nighttime, that we can count on the sun and the moon, waking and sleeping, something that we can count on, when other things in our lives are topsy-turvy. We feel that we can count on those, uh, those everyday happenings. They give us some stability. Now, the passage in Mark's gospel is called apocalyptic, apocalyptic writing. Apocalyptic writing is written at times when everything in the life of the community is going wrong, when everything they hold near and dear is being destroyed. And in that um, very difficult place, out of that time of, of desolation, Mark and others who write apocalyptic literature write of the hope that, of God's salvation, of the second coming of Christ, that the time is coming when all of this destruction will be, will be turned around and justice and peace will, will, will reign over all of creation. Apocalyptic writing gives hope to the people by saying that all that's been destroyed will be redeemed again. That God's will will rule on earth as in heaven, as in heaven, sorry. And that the enemies and evil will be defeated. That's the hope of the apocalyptic writing. So Mark proclaims these words to God's people in the midst of the suffering and the desolation. He says, then, after the desolation, then you will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. In those days, there will be suffering, but then Christ will come to rule over all of God's creation. There's that hope in apocalyptic writing. So this is the first uh, Sunday in Advent, and at Advent, we await and prepare once more for the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, of the infant Jesus in the manger. But in Advent, we also wait for the, the, the revelation of God again, the coming of God uh, into our, our uh, turbulent world, and when evil will finally be defeated. And so call, uh, Mark calls the people back then, and he calls us now to be awake, to watch, to wait, to trust that the time is near at hand when God's salvation will be revealed in all of the world, when the principalities of power and powers of darkness will be defeated, when justice and righteousness will hold sway. To a desolate people, Apocalyptic writing offers words of hope that this is God's world and eventually God will rule over all of creation. You know, I was thinking in some ways we are living in an, in an apocalyptic time. 
Of course, we know the whole world is in the grip of a pandemic. Many people have died from the pandemic. Many people are sick. We await, we await a vaccine, which we hope will change everything. And in the meantime, in this time, we struggle with isolation from loved ones, from the fear of getting uh, COVID-19 ourselves. And we try our best to be vigilant and alert. In some ways, we're living through a, a time of apocalyptic time, a, a time of, of profound change and, and, and disruption. The season of Advent invites us to watch, to wait, to prepare for God's coming into our world once more. St. Mark calls us to keep awake. In Advent, some of our questions may be, where are you, God? When are you coming into our midst? How can we see you alive in the world? And we pray, come now. Advent invites us to wait with high expectations for the God who always is coming, who is in the world. If we look and listen around us, God is alive in the world, who comes to us in surprising ways. Now, I shared this week in um, one of my messages online, uh, a quote that I wanted to share again from uh, Martin B. Uh, Koppenhaver. He says, waiting for Christ to come or to come again requires an expectant watchfulness because we never know where or how or through whom Christ will appear. He goes on to say, this waiting requires, this requires from us a different kind of waiting. He says, some waiting is passive, but there's also active waiting. A girl who stands on a street corner waiting for the bus to arrive will experience one kind of waiting, a passive waiting. But that same girl on the same corner, hearing the sound of a parade that's just around the corner out of sight, she'll wait, but it'll be a different kind of waiting, right? It will be full of expectation, a waiting on tiptoe, an act of waiting, expecting. And he gives us one other image or metaphor for Advent. He says, a fisherman finds it burdensome to wait for spring to arrive because that's passive waiting, waiting for the days to go, right? But he says, once she is fishing, however, she does not find it a burden to wait for the trout to rise to the fly because it's an active kind of waiting, right? Full of expectation. That's the kind of active waiting Jesus had in mind for us, his followers, when he says, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. So the holy season of Advent begins today. I hope that it will be a blessed season for each of us and as a, as a church community. In the season of Advent, we're invited to watch, to wait, to prepare, to anticipate, to expect God coming into our midst once more. So let's use this time well, open to receiving the coming of God in surprising ways. Amen. Thanks be to God. So this is our time when we uh, usually uh, pass the offering plate, uh, but I'll just, I just wanted to offer an invitation to the offering. And of course, um, the offering is both our, 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 it's our time, our offering our talents and offering our, our dollars. Our lives and our offerings are in God's hands and they make a difference for good in the world. Let us share our blessings with grateful hearts.
So we're invited to stand and we'll sing our doxology, uh, Hark the Glad Sound. Hark the glad sound, the Savior comes, the Savior promised one. Let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song. Gracious God, shine on us, bless our lives, bless our offerings, and use them for your good purposes in this world you love so much. Amen. So together we take uh, this opportunity to confess our faith uh, as a community. So let's share in our creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace. So our, our minutes for mission this morning is another good news story uh, of a young person, a teenager, and the uh, blessings that she received as being part of a United Church summer camp, uh, offering her skills as, uh, into, in the uh, work of this uh, camp. Um, Golden Lake Camp is the name of the camp. It's in the upper Ottawa Valley. And um, uh, this young person, uh, Amy, says these things. This year will be my second as program director for Golden Lake Camp, and my fourth year in total I started my Golden Lake Camp journey as a volunteer, spending two and a half weeks there my first summer. I could go into lots of detail about all the amazing things I experienced, the equally amazing staff and the campers I met, the personal and spiritual growth I went through, and the deeper connection with God I fostered. But she says, I don't think you want to hear an essay length story. In short, by the end of time volunteering, I'd been having so much fun that I didn't even remember to cash my honorarium check. That's happened to me a couple of times as ministry. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the treasurer lives in hope. The, exec <laughs> the executive director uh, the one and only uh, lovely Beth Payson told me the following summer when I applied for a permanent position how I kind of messed up the budget that year by not cashing my check. Whoops. Working at Golden Lake Camp, literally, and I don't use that word light lightly, made my life better. And I've met some lifelong friends there. The atmosphere and love in this place are infectious and you truly make a noticeable difference in children's lives. So we give thanks for Amy's story, and we give thanks that we can support uh, persons like Amy through our mission and service uh, dollars uh, that continues to make a difference locally and around the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. So just uh, a few announcements this morning. Um, it's kind of interesting to think that in this worship service, we're, I'm, we're worshiping those of us who are here in the sanctuary, and I'd say there might be about 30 of us. Any, any count, Mary Lynn? 30! 
right on, roll, which is what, and we're all uh, safely spaced. And uh, thanks to, to Mary Lynn and Glenda who've, who've helped us keep our protocols. But we knew how important it was uh, to also be able to get the worship service out to uh, uh, some of our congregation who, who aren't comfortable coming into a building, but who are, are desirous of worship. And so uh, we're looking forward to finding out how many people uh, joined us uh, this morning via, via the Zoom and, how, and uh, how, how it was for them in terms of the, the sound and, the, and the, the video and the audio. And this also will be on our Facebook site, so you can go to it this afternoon if you just say, boy, I want to hear that sermon again, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and it'll also be, uh, we'll, we'll be transferring it to our, as a link on our website, like we did when we were, when we were uh, doing these from home. So very thankful, and as I said, very thankful uh, to, to you, John, and Linda, and, and Dieter, and uh, Pat, um, for enabling this. I think it's really, really important in this holy season of Advent and Christmas that uh, all of us who want to have the opportunity uh, to worship. So now you have a choice on Sunday morning. You gotta say, am I gonna stay in my PJs with my coffee or? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the other Sunday you were in your PJs here, weren't you, Amy? <laughs> yes, you were. Um, so just a reminder, we have our, our annual uh, Advent Christmas uh, Open Door, the Open Door newsletter. Uh, thanks to Jane collating and bringing it together. Uh, today's the deadline for any submissions, and we'll hope to send it out next Friday and uh, give you an, uh, an opportunity to see some of the things uh, uh, planned. Uh, how many people so far have been on our online Christmas auction? Yeah, that's great, eh? People are having a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to spending my afternoon on uh, on that. And um, I guess it's uh, you can see who's bidding and, and who's bidding against you. And the, 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 uh, uh, the dollars keep going up and up, Barb. They do. So... Uh, and it's a fun thing to do. So I'm really thankful for, for Barb and Rosemary and uh, for making this happen. And Cheryl, thanks Cheryl. And, and, and Jen, yeah. So a great team. And uh, you know, it's just, I, I'm really proud of how we've uh, 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 transitioned in COVID to having these events that, that we're able to do this way. So uh, good, good for us, and uh, look forward to uh, to continuing that till December the eighth. We can keep keep uh, uh, bidding, bidding. Hmm? Keep bidding, yeah. Um, I want to thank Amy and our, our our worship and Christian education committee. They've uh, put together some uh, Advent packages for our young families. Amy has some of them here today uh, to give out to grandparents or others so they get there. And we're also using our, our St. George uh, website page, uh, or no, sorry, Facebook page, uh, to share some Advent uh, uh, learning and, and devotional. So we hope that, that you find that uh, meaningful. And we're still planning for our, our Christmas carol uh, sing on December 13th. It's gonna, we're gonna be in our cars or at a social distance outside and uh, three o'clock on December the 13th. And I want to thank Amy and Sandra Jean for, for organizing that. And um, St. George uh, is there, this uh, December 1st to 31st is a celebration of lights. I think especially this year, we're all in need of seeing the wonderful uh, colored lights uh, throughout our community. So uh, it's uh, the St. George Marketplace is uh, really encouraging us uh, to put out our, uh, our Christmas lights on our our uh, homes, uh, businesses, and churches. And I was so uh, pleased to see that we've got our two wreaths out on the front door, and we've got uh, uh, the angel Gabriel has shown up, which is wonderful, and uh, is uh, trumpeting people and, and saying, come on in, come on into worship. So uh, that's great, and, and uh, thanks uh, to uh, Mary Lynn and Cheryl, Amy, who, who put up our, uh, and uh, Jim, uh, for that, uh, I think it's really wonderful that people driving by can see uh, can see those uh, lit up in front of our church, and uh, so yeah, that's a, a great initiative. Now I, I don't know if uh, if there were um, any other announcements. 
Did you want to say anything else, Amy? Or? Okay, yeah, if you're done. Yeah, yeah, that, that carol singing pretty well. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't make it too easy. We, yeah, a, ch a challenge is good, right? That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Google the answers. Very good. Well, it's it's good to be together and and uh, sharing in worship this morning. And let's take this time. Um, oh, the one other announcement I forgot. We. Uh, Jane put them here so I could see them and remind me, uh, these, this makes a wonderful soup uh, and it goes to the uh, Ontario uh, Christian Gleaners uh, that we support. And uh, there's still five packages left for $5 each, seven packages left. Wonderful. So see Jane, if you want to uh, make a purchase. That's wonderful. Thanks, Dieter. Yeah. Hmm? 51 pounds. Well, <laughs> good. Well, ways that we can reach out and uh, so important all year and, and especially at the Advent Christmas season. So thanks be to God. So this is our time to uh, bring our hearts and minds together uh, in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we bring our hearts and our minds together in prayer at this time. We offer thanks for this holy season of Advent. In this time of watching, waiting, preparing for your coming into the world, open our eyes to the wonders that are right around us. Open our ears to the sounds of hope that ring in our midst. God, help us to savor this season, to be present to each new day. Show us ways to deepen the time that is ours. Give us strength and courage to live beyond our fears. Help us always to put our trust in you. God, we give thanks for your church. By the Spirit, we are connected to one another. Guide us as we seek to witness to your love in our words and in our deeds. We rely on your leading and your grace. We give thanks for the songs and the carols of this Advent Christmas season, carols that speak to our heart and lift our spirits. We give thanks for the Christmas lights up in our community. May their light lift our spirits and remind us that in Jesus, your light shines. We thank you, O oh God, for our family, our church, and our community traditions. Even though things will be different this year, we know that your hope, your peace, your joy, your love will find a way. Gracious God, we pray for ourselves and one another. Send your healing touch upon us. Lift our spirits with the good news of your coming. Hold close those who will find this season difficult 
those of us who are missing loved ones, those of us who are grieving loss, those of us for whom this will be the first Christmas without a loved one. Hold us in the arms of your love. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we raise up to you those who are in our thoughts and prayers today. Bring healing to our brother Sheldon Ottman as he recovers from a heart attack. Watch over Sheldon and surround Carol and family with your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for our sister Susie McDonough as she moves into long-term care. Guide and strengthen her in this time of change. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we raise up to you now aloud or in the silence of our hearts those who we are praying for today. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, hear the prayers of your people, and in your love, answer us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So our closing uh, hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So 
from here, let's go out into the world uh, confident that God's Spirit will be with us, surround us, give us the strength and the courage that we need to live this week and to uh, uh, enjoy the blessings of the Advent season. So God's blessings on each of us in this holy season. And it's good that we can sing or hum together our, uh, our blessing, uh, Go Now in Peace. Will guide you in all.